Linda Michelle, I'm coming for you. Well, a very good evening to each and every one of you, and welcome to this week's episode of your Manchester Hello Show. Hello then, I thought uh, you'd been replaced by Trekkie Monster then. I look exactly the same, don't I? You do, the hairstyle and everything. Thank you. <laughs> Trekkie Monster, of course, a character from a fabulous musical called Avenue Q. He was here before, you know. Ah, oh, I always miss the good ones. He was here, he was having fun with us. Do you want to see what you have to say? Yeah, that'd be good. Trekkie Monster! We have got a special guest right here now for you. It's all the way from the musical of Having UQ, and this is probably the most freakiest interview I've done in a very long time. We're not just speaking to a human, although we've got one with us, we've also got a monster here as well. It is Trekkie Monster, and of course, Ellis Dockham, everybody. How are you both? Well, I'm very well, thank you. Yes. And Trekkie, how are you? Yes, very good, thank you, and good pronunciation of his name. It's very difficult to get sometimes. Thank you. Mm. Where does your name come from, Trekkie? Oh, well, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. That sounds like good fun. Mm. Now, you live on a very special street, don't you, Trekkie? It's a street called... Avenue Q! Yes, it's mm. an avenue, isn't it? It is. And what goes on there? Anything or nothing? Oh, well, I tend to spend most of my time in my room. I don't really like to get out much. Um, what is it you do in your room, then? Well, I, um, I like the internet. Oh, yeah? Anything particular about the internet? Google? Something? Anything? Yeah, yeah, I use Google a lot. Um... Mainly for, um, PORN! Oh, I love porn so much! Oh my god! Yes. Mm -hmm. And you spend a lot of time in there watching that, do you? All day long. Yeah? Do you, and do you... all night. And, and all night? Mm -hmm. I never sleep. That's probably why your right hand's so flexible mm -hmm. today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and, uh, for today. And... Too your hair's very that. nice, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And, and What's uh, your favourite colour? Uh, hot pink. Oh, we're gonna get on just fine! We can watch mm. porn together. Oh, please, yeah. yeah, come over whenever you like. Uh, uh, literally. Mm. So, um, Ellis, you've, you've mm. been doing this, this lovely musical. This is really freaking my eyeliner. <laughs> Ellis, you've been doing this musical, and you are part of the... Um, well, you play everybody within this yes. show, don't you? Yeah, I'm part of the ensemble, and there's four of us. Yeah. Um, and between the four of us, we uh, cover all of the roles in the show. Uh, we uh, also operate puppets backstage, we sing backstage, everything you hear on uh, Avenue Q, the UK tour, is live, nothing is pre-recorded, um, and it is our job to make sure that the show runs smoothly, no matter what happens. How do you go about learning so many roles? <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of coffee. Because mm -hmm. it's yeah. not just the roles mm. you're learning, it's not just the songs you're learning, obviously yeah. you've got a slight extension to one of your hands, Yes. and I guess yeah, they yeah. all come in different positions and different ways of operating them as well. They do indeed. So it's not only learning the voices, the different voices. I have to do three if I'm on for this track. Um, yeah. Nikki kind of speaks a bit like this. The bad idea bears up really high there up here. Uh, and then obviously you've already heard this one. I'll yeah. give him a rest. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so not only the voices, but the puppeteering. There's, there's a lot of technicalities that come into um, doing the different puppets. Every puppet has a different sort of niche way of like making it become alive and look real. And you've got to kind of try and perfect those while sticking to character and the voices and, and had you worked with the puppets before? No, no I had not. Um, neither of us, no, none of us had actually, apart from Tom. Um, and uh, they, they prefer that um, right. because then they kind of teach you their way of, of operating them. You know, there's no bad habits, that kind of thing, you know? Uh, yeah. But people watching this and, and seeing uh, our Trekkie here, uh, they've already kind of guessed that he's high. Are you still all right over there? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah I'll no, get no. back to you in a minute. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, they've probably guessed already that this is not for the fate hearted is it <laughs> no it's not there is a there's an age restriction on the uh, on the on the uh, posters 14 plus it's, it's a suggestion uh -huh. really. yeah it's not not you know um, and yeah it's do you know what it, it comes across like it's going to be too naughty or too um, kind of uh, outrageous but mm -hmm. it, it is, it's full of heart um, it's a real good feel feel good factor about the show that's what I was uh, gonna say yes yes yeah, yeah. a lot of the songs are they come across as perhaps within their outset message as being quite crude or yes. quite vulgar. But mm. actually, um, due to the story and the characterization of a lot of the, the characters 
the puppets and then yes. of course the people yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. It's actually got a lot of heart, hasn't it's it? It's lovely. And, and that's where they really capture that Sesame Street vibe, um, where, you know, ch children are, are, are kind of taught on Sesame Street where, uh, to, you know, if you, you grow up and do anything, if you dream hard, like dream big, you know, work hard, whatever. Um, and on Avenue Q, e, it, you know, life's not like that. You know, life's not as idealistic as mm -hmm. that. Um, and it's quite tough. But what's nice about it is that it's kind of, you know, the, the message is that that's only for now, for want of a better phrase, um, because, you know, things will be all right. And that's what's nice about the show is that you kind of leave thinking, oh, do you know what, I laughed, I had a good time, but I kind of feel a little bit uplifted. So it's This show is with us and for the rest of this week, isn't it? It is, yeah, we're here until Saturday. And yeah. it, it, it's probably already sold out or is near it, enough to sell it out. It's getting there, yeah. But if people want tickets, left. they should get onto the Palace Opera House website, yes. Ticketmaster yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, yeah, or call up the box office, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. definitely one that you definitely, definitely should see. Not for the faint hearted, but thank you very much, Ellis. Well, and all. thank you very much to our lovely Trekkie. No, oh, thank you. It was a pleasure. I'll see you later tonight, yes? I'll let you get back to your pawn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. We've got somebody back now. I'll give you a clue. Give you a clue. Oh. Bean bag. <laughs> Is it our pet dog? It's... <gasps> yes. <laughs> Actually, you're really not far off at all with that, are you? She is back. It is I'm our gorgeous Hayley. Hello. Do you know, you two get away far too much. Where have you been? I've been all over the place. I've been to Jersey. Yeah. And I've been filming on Cold Feet as oh, well. Yeah. What are you yeah. doing in Cold Feet? Can't tell you the role at the moment because it gives away too much of the storyline. Oh, uh, but... Is it dramatic or is it funny? It's both. Okay. I love coffee. Mm. Very, very iconic. Just like you, my dear. Oh, so, well. have you missed us? We missed you. I've missed you, and I've been giddy, haven't I, since I got in the studio? You have been giddy. Yeah. You have been very, very. It's a, it's a strange time, though, speaking about actresses, isn't it? Because yeah. um, we've got to that point. Did you see the story in the papers the other day? I did, you know, because I'm not a big EastEnders fan. No. But this yeah. caught my eye. Tell me a little bit more about it. This is Katie Jarvis. Yeah, she played Hayley in EastEnders. Right. Um, and I think she left, I think it was February. Mm -hmm. and of she, her own accord or because they just got rid of I think it yeah. was just end of storyline. I okay. think it was just the end of the contract. Just yeah. like she was in for six months or a year or something. And that was it for now, you yeah. know. So she did what all actors, in my opinion, do. And she got a job. Yeah. And she got a job like everyone in our industry more or less does on the side to support her profession. And she has two children and she's working in b &Ms as a security guard. And they've made a big deal about this, haven't they? They're really gone <clears throat> for her. Certain newspapers, which I don't like to mention the name of because oh, I, I don't want to give them any sort of credit no. really, um, have really gone to town on her and I felt really sorry for her. And my first thought, and I think I tweeted this as well, was woman gets job. I mean, so there the must be no news that day. Do you well, know what I mean? I, I mean, how dare they do I think that? because a lot of people forget that acting is actually a job. Yeah, and I think also, I blame the media for this as well, and to a certain extent, the mainstream media, is that they make it out that it's such a glamorous world. And occasionally it is, but most of the time, as we all know, it's not. It's really, really hard, yeah. you know, and most actors and most creatives that I know the, the, they might have a, jo um, a non-industry job, as I'd say, all the time or some of the time. Do you know, it takes me back to, oh gosh, many years ago, there used to be this programme called Rainbow. I don't know oh, Rainbow. God, and Rainbow. And Rainbow. Jeffrey yeah. in Rainbow, yeah. the, the man, not the puppets and everything. I could do some innuendos was, on that. There <laughs> was a newspaper that went to town on him because yeah. they found him stacking shelves yeah. in a supermarket yeah. years later. Yeah. But again... The guy has got to have a career past it. he's a taxi driver as well. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, yeah. I mean, what they're supposed to do, never, ever work again. Or exactly. Or themselves. So, I what mean, we should hard. do is, the, when the journalist eventually comes out of work, we should shame him for his next job. Yeah. Journalists used that. loosely, in yeah. my opinion. Well, yeah, very true indeed. Yeah. Mm. But, mm -hmm. you've been doing a bit of journalism for us. You've been researching... The, the what's going on on the TV. I have, yes. So, give us a clue what's going on on the TV. Yeah. Alrighty then. So, hi, I'm Hayley and welcome to On The Box. And today I'm not on a beanbag. I'm actually sat on a sofa. Woohoo. Now, yes. it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Shell. Um, it's absolutely wonderful to be back in the studio after all these weeks. As I just said, I've been in Jersey and I've also been filming on Cold Feet, which incidentally is still filming around Manchester at the moment. Now, on to the next thing I wanted to talk to you about, RuPaul's Drag Race. What do you think so far? Let me know, drop me a tweet, at HeyKate and at your MCR. And also, the last few weeks, I've spent time catching up on the new series, 
a wonderful series called Pause, and that is set in New York. If you haven't seen it, do go on iPlayer and watch that. It's absolutely brilliant. And the second series actually starts at the end of this week, and I cannot wait. Honest to God, it's so good. Now, the film Judy about Judy Garland is proving to be a hit. Again, drop me a tweet. Let me know your thoughts. Are you loving it? Are you not? How do you think Renee is doing playing Judy? And I must give a shout out to the American series, Unbelievable. That's on Netflix. It's absolutely brilliant. It's based on a true story about a young girl called Marie who was raped, but no one actually believes her. And Marie is the victim of gaslighting from all angles. Now, that's it from me. I'll catch you next time. Bye. There's an alarm going off here, I tell you, and everything and all sorts. Do you know what that is, ladies and gentlemen? What's that, love? That's telling me to take my tablets. <laughs> <laughs> You'll need to take tablets when you see this flower. Honestly, there's an immersive horror experience coming to Manchester very, very, oh, very soon. Oh, I've heard about this one. We're all going to be putting these little tankers, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're basically, you're going to be suppressed in sound. Containers, scary sound. Well, we just had to hear a bit more about it. And you caught with the guy behind it. That's right. This is an interview that I had a few weeks ago with Mr. Thomas Moore. I'll get my tablets. We are here now with our next guest, an absolutely fabulous person person who's going to tell us about a very immersive experience coming to well we don't actually know where but we do know it's going to be somewhere in manchester and it's going to be here from the 29th of november to the 12th of january next year that is a very long run welcome to you how are you i'm good how are you tell us more about it i'm intrigued and excited so survive the nightmare is uh it's a horror show inside a shipping container happens in the total darkness uh, and it happens in your ears so everyone goes in and they're locked inside this container of which they cannot escape um, for 20 minutes and they pop these headphones on and it goes dark and the show happens to all intents and purposes around them because in their head uh, um, how to explain it so it's called binaural sound and the way you record it is exactly the way that a human would hear it so so as we record a microphone is placed in the same position as the human head will be on the day and you pop your headphones on and you are listening to a very specific recording of that location inside the shipping container. So as all these horrendous things are happening around you, it tricks your brain into thinking that you are there. I mean, this has been done before, hasn't it? But I mean, not on this level. It sounds like a lot of scientific experience has gone into this. Yeah, so there are a few people who have done it quite a lot um, and, they, and they really are the pioneers of this technology. And it's only really been coming into the mainstream over the past two years or so um, and we decided to take it to the next level uh, and make it really terrifying and try and scare everyone so as they, much as possible. The things they'll be hearing whilst they're in this container, they, they, obviously by the sheer title of it, it's going to be scary stuff. Yeah, so I'm not going to give too much away but in the first show it it's based around the idea of a haunted house oh, and all i will say is a haunted house and very scary <laughs> deranged child and that is all i'm gonna say oh. but i mean it is it's petrifying i wrote it and even i am not looking forward to seeing it so when you write something like this what are you writing are you writing down sounds or actions or are you writing it almost as a proper script a little bit of both so it's a script it's pretty much 40 scripts so i'm writing from the point of view of what each individual in that container is hearing and not everyone hears the same thing wow not everybody hears the same thing yeah so is it a unique experience for absolutely everybody then yeah you're giving nothing away and I, no that is it's... sometimes better than giving too much away i mean i mean with this i don't want to give too much away because then people will have a chance to prepare for it and i really really want them to be as terrified as i'm going to be and how are you going to judge how terrified they're going to be you're going to be there yeah so before it opens we have a week's worth of previews of of um of guests coming in and trying it out before anyone experiences it, the entire team will go in and experience it for about three days constantly. <laughs> so honestly, it's like on repeat, 
nightmare for three days. I've got it in my diary. I'm going to have some Xanax and a bottle of vodka and I'll be fine by the end of it. And normally at the end of these interviews, we ask, where is it going to be? Now, we're not actually aware of where it's going to be, are we? No. I mean, you are obviously by that smile of yours. You're totally aware of where it's going to be. (laughs) Yeah, so I know. Uh, As hopefully do the people who um, are going to be in it, because otherwise that's a nightmare. Uh, No, but um, it's coming to central Manchester. Okay. Secret location. Okay. We will start drip feeding that very soon. And it's in a shipping container. Yes, yeah, so it'll be pretty difficult to miss. Yeah, I'm just trying to think where in Central Manchester the shipping containers. Hmm. I think I've got it, but we'll talk off camera about that. <laughs> so when's it on again? It's on from the 29th of November to the 12th of January. Yes, yeah, so six weeks. That's a really long run as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And there are 10 shows a day from 3 o'clock till 9pm. So it's, it's pretty intense. And we're bringing it to Manchester before we take it to London. So it opens in London. That's the right way to do it. Well, yeah. Yes. That's what I think as mm-hmm. well. <laughs> Indeed. Well, thank you ever so much for your thank time today. You. I am very excited about this. If I can um, pluck up the courage to go to one of these things, I might do it. Oh, yeah. And we'll dry clean any of your costumes for you as That's well. That's all right. I'll wear three layers of tenor lady. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. You are going to need that tenor lady. It would scare me to death. It would scare me too. It really would. Um, speaking of scary things, oh, yes. you know there's a, a, a musical play, play musical play, is it Well, play? yeah, I just play? thought you were going to say we've got two two lads on the sofa that are quite scary, but you know, if that you want to go down that road... That is very scary. <laughs> I do. <laughs> we should introduce them first of all, shouldn't we? Now, these are two of our new chappies that yes. are helping us out. They are part of the Your Manchester team. That is right. We've got our lovely George and our lovely Jack as well. Mm-hmm. And they are going to be, um, they've been doing quite a lot of well, stuff. Well, they've been roving reporters on a specific performance of um the exorcist now you thought it was a movie it's not anymore it's been taken to the stage and you saw it guys verdict did you like it is it scary do you get scared by films first of all we watched the exorcist on sunday sunday night yeah um and it's sort of outdated now so i think at the time obviously outdated in what what, way i remember when it came out what do you mean it's outdated what was it 60 no it was 73 sorry 73 a long time ago let's just say a long time ago the like the effects are very much outdated now compared to what you'd get on tv well that's because most of the effects done in the movie were actually really done in the movie rather than in yeah and post-production if you look at the film and then you go watch the theatrical performance they've implemented the same um, makeup and stuff. Have they got famous heads yeah, waving. because Linda oh. Blair was really famous as the woman that was possessed, wasn't she? She had all scratch marks on her face and did the whole head spinning. Is that what we can expect from yeah. the? Stage? I think it's uh, very similar to the film. Would you yeah. agree with that? The only thing they really couldn't do was the levitation, I suppose. Wasn't it? Yeah, or oh, and the the stair bit. Oh yeah, you're not going to get a girl to crawl backwards down the stairs, are you? Yeah, <laughs> I was, that might I was be a bit hard. You could do that, so. Yeah, but you did as a VT, didn't you? You did. You did. Let's, well, let's look at the VT. Yeah, I'm VT. trying to see it. Yeah. Through that VT. We're outside the Manchester Opera House. We've seen the film. It's always this the, the, the scene where oh, like a person possessed. It's always so nice. <laughs> Oh my god. The head spins are brutal. There's someone inside you. Sometimes. And now it's time to see the theatrical performance. I think we're going to try and get in with some of the crowd, see if they're excited for it. But there's already a queue. If you look down to your left, there's already a queue forming for the door. Film was somewhat scary. Let's see if the theatrical performance is. Would you like to play a game, Regan? Oh, 
Sale, tú vas a hacer Sale, quita el negro. Right, so did you guys enjoy the performance? It was incredible. Yeah, it's one of the amazing. one of the best things I've ever seen on stage. Yeah. So do you guys go to the theatre a lot then? We go, quite, we go yeah. to the theatre a lot. Um, we both work in horror. Oh, okay. And this is one of the best things that we've ever seen. So it's been branded as the scariest thing on theatre. Would you agree with that? Um. Yes. Oh yeah, I'd reckon I'd so. Say it, I'd say it it's, is one of the scariest things in theatre. There's just tension throughout. So even with that spy on it in the in, in the interval, so it's still continuing with like the same kind of level of music, and it, it has, doesn't let up for any minute. It has a lot of moments of silence, and to me, that is one of the most scariest things in theatre. Do you think it's quite true to the film? It's very accurate. It would be very difficult to do that because we think it's on screen. Yeah, plenty of time to be able to produce it on stage. Yeah. You would have to be a genius. But what they did was they had all the special effects that were in the film were actually on stage, which was tremendous and it was good to see because there are certain moments everybody remembers. We don't have to say what they are, but am I right in saying yeah. you expect those things and they were there and they were well done. Right. So, what did you think of the performance? I thought it was really good, actually. Really close to the film. Really well acted. Uh, scary. <laughs> scary. What part scared you? It was just the way the way the uh, the noises were, the scenery was. It was quite good. So the performance finished about ten minutes ago. As you can see, people have already scattered. I think it was sort of that scary. Um, there was a lot of screams from the crowd, especially in the beginning. Um, the lights sort of, rather than just dimming, it like exploded. So there was a loud sound. A lot of people screaming in the crowd. Uh, for me, I didn't find it that scary, but again, the reaction of the crowd was very much uh, that it was feared. We've spoke to some people outside, um, really positive reviews, people saying uh, it, it's really scary, people need to come see it. Um, in that respect, maybe it is one to watch. There's some really funny elements in it. There's not too many, but it's well balanced throughout. It keeps it quite, you know, routine and it keeps it nice and balanced. With that, back to the studio. Well, that looks really scary, doesn't it? Do you know what? I think, Jack, you've got nerves of steel because, honestly, some of those reactions of people, they were really, like, terrified and they, they loved it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the majority of the people we spoke to outside basically said, it's brilliant, you need to go see it. It's very true to the film. We had uh, one person who wasn't willing to speak on camera, but he was like, oh, I was a bit disappointed in all fairness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then one person said it was a bit cheesy when they came out, but ma the majority of the people we spoke to mm -hmm. loved it. They, they said it was so true to the film that they can't, they, they got it, they got it right and they smashed it. Gosh, mm -hmm. move your film, George. I'd probably have to go for the, uh, the theatre one because it's live, it's actually happening. Like there's no magic happening in post-production. You're seeing it as if it was happening for real. And, um, like Jack said in the VT, I think the scariest bit probably was actually at the start, where they just cut the lights off. They just go off to you. They just went off, and then they played like this noise, it was like explosion noise. Yeah, or? so it's rather than um, dimming the lights as you'd normally see, it was just a big bang, and everyone started screaming. Yeah. Yeah. And then someone walked down from the crowd and had his hands out, started... Oh, don't give it all away, don't give it all away, because it is on at the Opera House, isn't it, until Saturday? Yeah? yeah I believe yeah, so. so. Brilliant, so you can catch it there it's good, isn't if it? you uh, are brave enough. You can go and watch a nice scary thing or watch puppets. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's absolutely. Manchester for this week, it, is, it? Yeah, it is, We're very diverse and cultural. We are, but thank you very much for doing that for us. Yeah. And uh, speaking of scary things, go on. next week. Uh, are you ready for next week? I'm not really ready for next week. I have to say, I'm being dragged along to this, viewers. It is our annual scariness episode, everybody, yeah. where we are off to a secret location somewhere here within our... And, and you know what it did to me last year? Yeah, you were, you were pretty much set <laughs> by it, weren't you? Yeah, very yeah, much it set. It took you a good few months to get over it, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. But this is obviously, of course, because we are building up to Halloween. So this is our Halloween special of your Manchester, and it's going to scare your socks off. It, well, hopefully. We don't know. Well, it's getting my tights off, yeah. It's getting, yeah, yeah, 20 denniers. <laughs> yes, it is going to be spooky, but make sure in the meantime you subscribe and like and tell everybody to tune in to our lovely episodes here only on, on Your Manchester. Manchester.